WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to meet the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowotsky. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Beat the Champ. My name is Paul Peck, along with Bowling Hall of Famer Sue Navoisky, and we're going to have a little fun here on our final week stop at Island Lanes on Grand Island. We always have a little fun with this fourth show of the month, Sue, and we're going to do that today, and particularly based on the fact that there's Malwitz on the name of the front of this bowling alley. You know we're going to have a little fun. Yeah, it looks like an episode of Family Feud today. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it. And you have to pay attention and watch what's going on because there's going to be a lot of bowlers out here. It's almost like a team concept. We're going to have five bowlers in each team, so we're really going to have to watch the teams. Yeah, it's the house championship at Malwitz's Island Lanes, and as Sue pointed out, considering most of these people are related to Mike Malwitz, it really <laughs> is going to be a family feud. So stick around. We're going to have some fun. We'll explain everything when we get started. So it's Beat the Champ at Island Lanes in Grand Island. Let's get rolling. <laughs> So the Island Lanes House Championship begins with Team Mike Johnson on the left, Team Mike Malwitz on the right, five team members on each squad, Sue, all determined through qualifying, and then they all got together, had a few beverages, and had a draft amongst the captains. So uh, we're a little all over the place with the format here, and you'll do your best to explain it to everybody, but each bowler is going to work their way through, and we're going to come up with a winner out of this match, and then we've got two other teams in the next match and then we're going to have a Island Lanes House Championship. So it's CJ Wilkinson to get things started here for Team Mike Johnson. Well, this is really classic Baker style bowling where you've got the, the five man concept. First bowler is going to bowl the first frame and the sixth frame. Second bowler is going to bowl the second frame and the on, seventh Jesse! frame, and so on. on so this is Jessica Bowling, right, bowling right, for three. Team Mike Malwitz. So again, we're only going to see each bowler twice then. That's right. Per game, we'll see them twice. At Beat the Champ TV, hashtag Beat the Champ on Twitter. And make sure you like us on the Facebook page at Beat the Champ for all the latest information on qualifying and on the results for qualifying. If you want to see who's going to be bowling starting our next week's show at Rapids Bowling Center, Niagara Falls, you can go on the Facebook for the latest updates. So here's Jessica Balling trying to finish off the first frame with a spare. And she does for Team Mike Malwitz. And now it's Stephanie Price for Team Mike Johnson. Now all of these bowlers, Sue, are house bowlers here at Island Lanes. They had to qualify. They were eligible if they were in a league here at Island Lanes. Come on, ball. Something tells me they know each other, though. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, we're getting that sense, yes. We're, we're getting that sense that everybody knows everybody pretty well around here. So, uh, and as you can hear, because we have, see, this is what night we want to get a uh, loud crowd and atmosphere for the show. Yeah. We just, just have 72 people bowling That's in right. your last show. That's right. I think all of Grand Island is here right now. Yes. If you want to sneak onto Grand Island, I can guarantee you there's no tra there's no traffic at either of the bridges right now. Everybody's here on Island Lanes. Hey, that's a nice little spare pickup for Stephanie Price. And now it's Chris Bugenhagen for Team Mike Malwitz. And if you have been with us through our first three weeks of action here at Island Lanes when Mike Malwitz joined us for some of the shows, you know he can get his uh, his team fired up. Get it! Get it! Yeah! Nice strike for Chris Bugenhagen. <laughs> oh, we've oh come boy. off the rails already here, haven't we? <laughs> and we're only in the second frame. Gary Scott, the next bowler up for Team Mike Johnson. We will eventually get to the captains. They will be the last anchor bowlers uh, right. coming up here. Right. So Mike Johnson and Mike Malwitz, but here's Gary Scott. Yeah. Pretty good bowling going on here. I'll tell you, it's always fun when you have people that stand there cheering for you. That's our, our college bowling was the same. Our high school bowling was the same. The whole team stands up behind you while you go up to bowl. And it really is a great feeling of 
momentum. You, it really pumps you up to have all those people back there. There's Janelle Saban as you get a look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard in our match between Team Malwitz and Team Johnson. Here's Jeff Dio. We've seen Jeff uh, on Beat the Champ before. He's yep. got a couple of wins. Dio! Oh, Dio! Nice strike yeah, for Jeff Dio. How unusual is this to bowl in a setting where you're bowling in the first frame and not till the fifth or second to the seventh? I mean, oh, it's, it's, so un fun. it's weird. Is it? It's, it's fun, but it's weird, isn't it? I love it. Do you? Yeah, and it goes fast. It doesn't even feel like you're waiting that long to be up again. This is Rob Piccoli for Team Mike Malwitz. Oh, nice shot. Three in a row for the Malwitz gang. Yeah, baby. What I'm talking about, that's why I drafted you guys. <laughs> that would be the voice of Mike Malwitz if you couldn't figure that out already. I don't know that we how, how we had him subdued on the very first show uh, a month ago, but he's not subdued anymore. I think it was just early it? in the morning, that's all. Here's Jeremy Zimmerman. We've seen him on the last two Beat the Champ shows. But a pretty good battle into Mike Zarcone in our last uh, couple of weeks ago. And now we get a look at the captain, T Mike Johnson, another Beat the Champ a veteran as well. So here's the captain, Mike Johnson. Team Mike Johnson, fifth frame here in the first match of our Island Lanes House Championship. right Mike Johnson bowled uh, up at Manor Lanes earlier in the year when beat the champ was there he's got one win and one loss in one show appearance so we've got some uh, beat the champ vets sprinkled in here among the house league bowlers at Island Lanes oh, good representation you. for beat the champ absolutely oh! nice spare pick up there by Mike Johnson and now let's see if our oh buddy boy. Mike Mulwitz can back things up with his actual bowling skills. <laughs> let's go, Mulwitz. You know, we, 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 there's already some questioning about his general manager abilities based on the draft results, so let's see if he can back <laughs> it up with his bowling. Mike Walwitz also has been twice, uh, three times on Beat the Champ. One win and three losses and three appearances for Mike. He seems to find his way into those special shows, too. He yes, he does. He Pro usually Shop does. Show, well, he, you know, Rapids. when he helps set the rules, it's easier yeah. to find him into the shows. And, and it's a spare pickup in the fifth frame. So this feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. I'm not sure what might be the worst result, Mike's team winning or Mike's team losing. I know. Because if Mike's team loses, then he's going to have to come sit next to us. That's right. And the second time around, not quite as easy as the first time around for these bowlers. 22 pin lead for Team Mellis right now. So Gary is Jessica's uncle, Jessica, who's bowling leadoff for Team Mellis. So they're actually bowling, um, opposing each other. So we, it really is, this really is a family it really feud is. battle, isn't it? All right, so here's Jeremy Zimmerman. Ninth frame for Team Johnson. Well. Jeremy with the subdued sh uh, shirt choice here for today's match. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet anymore. 
Good strike for Jeremy. And now Rob Piccoli will finish things off here before we move to our captains for the final frame. I was thinking it the whole way there. Rob eyes the lanes. Right hand throw for a strike. So we go to the 10th frame. We're still pretty close here, aren't we? Well, it's up to Mike Mellis now. His team's up 22 pins. So it's in his hands. All right, well, let's see what he does. If he wants to be the true leader and team captain, it's time for him to answer the bell. 22 pin lead for Team Mowitz. And here's the captain in the 10th frame. Big strike. That's a winner. Go home, so Team Johnson, go home! <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mike does know that these are all regular bowlers. He doesn't want to get them too mad, right? Yeah. He wants them back uh, for Friday night bowling, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. All right. So, like I said, I'm not sure whether us personally are winners or not now that we don't have to sit next to Mike for the next two matches. Now, Mike knows he's not supposed to touch Janelle Saban. <laughs> She knew it was coming. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> At least he didn't tackle her this, this time. <laughs> right. We had an incident early in the year. That's why I thought Mike was very clear about the rules. Apparently, we have to remind him about that again. Hey, I left it up the rest. I put it on. And an impressive performance by Team Mowitz. A 248 up on the board. Gonna be good enough to win as Captain Mike Johnson will roll things out for his squad. So we have our first team that will advance to the Island Lanes House Championship. It'll be the team of the Mike Mowitz gang. We need a nickname. We got to get a Mike working on a nickname for his team. And as you get a look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard, as we await the final score to be posted up for Team Johnson. So, boy, it was a lot of fun. It was a little louder than we're used to here on Beat the Champ. <laughs> But uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of enthusiasm. What a, what a great idea for a way to do this fourth one. Hey, 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 wait your turn. <laughs> you got a lot of people involved. That's We're getting sure. photobombed by Mollett <laughs> in the middle of a match. So there's a nice strike to finish things off for Mike Johnson. And the final score of 206 is posted. So it's the Mollett's gang that will advance on to our championship. So now we have to see who they're going to meet. Team Marble or Team Krykum? That's our next match. But first, and unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with talking to Mike Mollett about his team's big win. We'll do that. Wait your turn. We're coming. Wait your turn. We're back at Island Lanes to wrap this one up and preview the next match. When we come back on an always fun edition of Beat the Champ. It's Team Mowitz that comes up with the victory and advances to our Island Lanes House Championship. So among your many skills, Mike Mowitz, of as a bowling proprietor and a bowler and a part-time announcer, general manager skills, because you drafted a good squad here. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I was getting a little razzed by my uh, other teams here, saying that we were the third seed, maybe even fourth seed, that I didn't know how to draft. But I, I think uh, that's proof what you just saw, that I know how to draft a team. Yeah, well, it was very impressive. Plus, you got your team pretty fired up as well, too. So That's a big part of bowling, man, team bowling. Uh, in high school and college, people get fired up. Team bowling, you have to get your team riled up. If you don't, then you're just going to fall by the wayside like a Team Johnson just did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so handicap our uh, your, your next opponent. Is it going to be uh, Team Marble or Team Krykum? I, I like to root for the underdog, but I'm going to have to say with Team Marble. 
All right, Sue, what do you think? I think this is a great motivator over here, and I think they take a tip out of your playbook and get themselves going. Could be either one of them. All right, well, we'll, we'll find out. That's our next match. Who is going to face Team Malwitz for the championship? We'll find out when Beat the Champ returns to Island Lanes right after this. Match number two of our Island Lanes House Championship. Team Krykum on the left, Team Marble on the right. The winner of this matches up with Team Malwitz for the Island Lanes Championship. So, uh, of course, we're going to bring Mike Malwitz in here to do a little scouting for us. You get a chance to uh, figure out who your opponents are going to be here. Well, uh, like I said in the last match, I, I believe it's going to be Tim Marble, but Sue was right. I might have lit a fire under Team Krykum's butt, <laughs> so we'll see. So we will begin with Team Krykum, and this is Mike Leto to start things off. And he starts it off with a strike. Sorry to correct you, but it's Mike Leto. Leto, thank uh, you very much. Sorry. I no, appreciate that. We want to make sure we get it right. Mike Leto. And we'll flip it over to Team Marble, and it will be Frank Misaraka the third will be the first bowler off for them. So again, give us a little insight into how this whole thing came about, the idea and the execution and the draft, and tell us the backstory behind all this. Well, Beat the Chance has been going on for the whole year, as everyone knows, and uh, you know all the different ideas for, for, for the fourth show. And you know, I've been talking to my bowlers about it. I think Jeff Krykum had input on this on this whole idea. Uh, you know, I just thought it'd be cool to have 20 guys bowl uh, Baker team games. And because the, the, the Baker team match um, brings a different kind of competition to the table. Mm -hmm. They do it a lot in college. Uh, I know I bowled in college and, and nothing like team bowling, you know, Baker matches. Sue. I know we brought that up earlier. There's nothing like having people standing behind you cheering for you. Yeah, like four, four other people cheering for you when, you when you need to strike, you know, there's nothing like it. And just the excitement, everybody's cheering the whole time, it's its great. This is Kelsey Fox on Team Krykum, and she'll have a difficult spare to pick up here. It's so much different compared to what we normally get, which is a little quieter, a little serene on our regular Beat the Champ competitions. To hear all you guys yelling and whooping it up is, uh, is kind of fun, but a little different. Things we're getting used to. It, it's definitely fun, but this is actually Lisa Bugenhagen. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's all okay. over the board here, so. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of in bigger, that's the it one is. thing. It is, all right, so that's Lisa Bugenhagen on Team Marble, and now we get Kelsey Fox on Team Krika. Who happens to be Lisa Bugenhagen's niece? Uh, you're just confusing <laughs> me even more now. Is there anybody in this competition? Is there anybody in this bowling alley that isn't related to each other? Oh, there's a couple of guys on the list, but not many. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Like I, I said the last so. couple of weeks, it's a big family around here. That's great. Whether you're just a friend, you're still family. All right, so how, so, so how did the whole draft thing shake out? How did, uh, did you have a little fun with that? Did you have a little trash talking during the draft itself? Oh, definitely. We had a blast. It lasted about 20 minutes, and uh, Beat the Champ Facebook page actually streamed it live. So, uh, and I, I think before the taping, we had about 500 viewers. No kidding. So it was, it was entertaining for all. And were those all related to now it's family re relatives going back and watching it? No, there are plenty of people that would like to watch <laughs> that draft, Paul. <laughs> All right, so now we move on to our third bowlers, and this would be Jeff Krykum, our team captain. Now, many people don't know this, but Jeff Krykum is actually Mike Krykum's twin brother. Yes, folks, they are actually twins. You'd have to be told that, because you wouldn't have come up with that on your own. Definitely not, but they are twins, guaranteed. All right, now here's Jim Fox, and if you were with us earlier in the month, you saw Jim Fox on the regular Beat the Champ and did a very nice job in almost uh, pushing Mike Zarcone, uh, almost beating Mike Zarcone as part of Mike Zarcone's big stretch of six consecutive games. Yeah, he Jim definitely gave that match nice a whirl. Yes, he did. A couple of 10 pins cost him the match, but overall, it was, he, he definitely did his part. He told me afterwards that he was actually nervous. He didn't show it on TV. No, he did You wouldn't not. be able to tell. He did not show it at all, so. You got to look at our Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard as we keep you up to date on our match between Team Marble and Team Krykum as part of our Island Lanes House Championship. Okay, let's go. Pick it up. 
So now we move on to Brian Barrett bowling for Team uh, Crichton. No, correct it, Andy Moran. <laughs> Baker's tough to keep track we, of. Isn't we need it? like <laughs> number, I'm used to numbers on the back of jerseys that well, let me keep track that, of all this that's stuff. That's the thing. A lot of times in uh, you know team matches, we'll have team shirts, but uh, we just had the the final night of qualifying before this, so it was it was a last minute kind of thing. Right. And Andy Moran, we also saw earlier here on Beat the Champ, and he was very impressive as well. So a nice strike there in the fourth frame for Andy. And now we get to Brian Barrett. All right, oh. Brian is actually CJ Wilkinson's uncle who, who bowled uh, in the first match. Who bowled in the first match today. So Brian will have to try to pick up a difficult spare here, Sue. Got a couple of open frames in this match. And at least the three pins there for Brian Barrett in the fifth frame. And now we get Mike Crichton. As Mike mentioned, the brother of team captain Jeff Krikum. The only Krikum. The only Krikum. <laughs> <laughs> little resin going on here. Yeah, well, that's that's to be expected. It's a little quieter than considering we have Maul what's on the microphone here for a moment. Uh, <laughs> quieted things down a little bit. But uh, can't, can't imagine what we're going to get in our next match, which will be the winner of this one versus Team Malwitz. Oh. And Mike is unable to grab that spare. So we've gone through the list here, the ranks one time. Almost one time as Tim Marble will finish us off here. Tim Marble has been on Beat the Champ earlier in the yes, year. Yes, he has. Uh, and I was actually, he's hes not related, but he's basically family. He grew up here at Island Lanes Bowling. And I was actually Timmy's best man in his wedding. There you go, that was trying to fire very everybody up. Of him. <laughs> We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Come on, Jim. Yeah. Nice, Come on. nicely done. Oh, and he leaves the ape in. Oh, I'm sorry. That was just uh, <laughs> that glare off his head is just killing me. I, I can't keep track of the pins he leaves because, I mean, that shiny bald head. You're gonna pay for all this. You realize that, oh, don't I know. you? You realize that this is on television and will be on the internet forever, which means you're never going to be able to get away from any of this. It's the first rule of television. Whatever you say will live forever. Here's Jeff Krikum. Jeff Krikum just shot his high set of his life uh, the other day. Seven... I don't know, it was really high. It was too high to count. 717. <laughs> 717. Oh, there you go, see? There you go. He knows. He's, he's listening. 717. That's very impressive. Good spare, Jeff. I think everybody remembers their high set of their life when they do it, you know? Kind of some, something memorable. 717 was his high set? Yeah. That's how he overtook Jeremy Zimmerman for the captain spot. Wow. All right, so now it's Brian Barrett for Team Krikum. Nicely done. Oh, wow, nice shot. That was a good shot. Team Krikum not going away. Andy Moran has been on fire lately, though. So yes, he has. I and like his odds on this shot. Like we said, we saw him earlier in the month here at Island Lanes and in the regular Beat the Champ competition. He did a very nice job. Andy Moran... Uh, Wound up losing to Andy Redding in our second match of the first show. Come on, man! Hey! Oh. 
just couldn't get that 10 pin to fall. <laughs> Sorry about that, Andy. <laughs> just just want to make sure everybody's like, hey, I recognize that guy. Where have I seen him before? Oh, yeah, I saw him on the earlier show. <laughs> Hopefully Andy doesn't launch this ball halfway down the lane like he did during uh, that match with Andy Reddy. Well, he, he, yeah, that may be a little more memorable as well, too. All right, good spare. Good spare for Andy. All right, that one only stuck a little bit. And now here comes your... Here comes your twin, Tim Marble. Yeah. I think your prediction's gonna hold true and Tim Marble will be your opponent. I think it's gonna be us and Tim Marble barring a complete meltdown by Tim Marble. Now, don't say that right before he throws. <laughs> That's not very nice. Oh, through the nose, he should have split there, folks. <laughs> There's a terrible pressure shot by Tim Marble. <laughs> he, you're setting back bowling announcing by like 50 years <laughs> and stuff like that. You can't do that. Oh, you can you do it. You have to be positive. When they're all family, you can do it. Well, we're just happy that he won, so we don't have to deal with him sitting next to us for the next match. <laughs> right. Come on, you love it, Paul. Yeah, we do. We love you, Mike. You know that. You bring a spirit and levity to our broadcast. <laughs> levity, that's a good word. That's a good word. <laughs> it is good. A little sophisticated for this crowd. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Particularly after after you had you got onto your third Red Bull, you were much better in the second show <laughs> than you were in the first. We don't want you to forget to stay tuned for the Modern Window Word of the Week. It's going to come up right after the show. You can win $5,000 worth of windows complete with installation from Modern Window that is following our championship match. So Team Marble puts the 190 score up on the board. And Mike Krikum will finish things off for his team's Effort. I do like Mike Crickham's shirt, though. He, it was a nice wardrobe cha choice for the day. Very stylish. Not quite Jeremy Zimmerman uh, brightness, but very stylish nonetheless. Looks like it just got off, like home from vacation. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So one more here for Mike Crickham. Actually, maybe two more. So it's going to be a win for Team Marble. So it'll be Team Marble and Team Malwitz for the Island Lanes House Championship. You don't want to miss what might be coming your way over the next 15 minutes, right? Absolutely. We're going to see some good just boys. Try just to stay just calm. wait for it. Try to be the the refine. Try to be channel your best Marv Levy and be nice and calm as a coach. Can you do that? I'll see what I can do for you, Paul. It's, why do I feel like that isn't going to have a prayer of happening? So, hey, we thank Mike for joining us, as he always does here. But he's got work to do. He's got bowling to do to see if he can claim his own house championship here at Malwitz's Island Lanes. So it's Mike's team and Tim Marble's team. And we'll talk to the winners from Team Marble and get you ready for the championship match. When we return to Grand Island, it's Beat the Champ at Island Lanes. Well, it's Team Marble that comes up the win. So you got a little bit of bragging rights, Tim, but you're this close to getting the ultimate bragging rights, which is beating Malwitz's team. Can you pull that off? Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, I think beating Krykum's team was was a big win for us. Uh, beating Malwitz is going to be a little difficult. He likes to talk quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I think as long as we stay focused, we'll be all right. All right. Can you guys match the intensity and volume of Team Malwitz? They got nothing on us. <laughs> they got all right, well, we'll find out. It's Tim Marvel's team and Mike Mullitz's team for the Island Lanes House Championship. We get it started right after this.
the Island Lanes House Championship pits Team Marble on the left, Team Malwitz on the right. Should be a lot of fun, should be a little bit loud, but it should be competitive. Both these teams have bowled well and lots of bragging rights and a little bit of cash on the line for these bowlers yep, yep. as well, too. A little but prize money is set aside for this, so yeah, they are bowling for something but other than to... Ultimately, I think the bragging rights may prove to have a little more legs than the cash, right? Yeah, I'm sure they want to quiet down Mike Mowitz. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they do. So we will get things started with Team Marble to begin things. And you get a look at Frank Miseraka the third. He will begin things here for Team Tim Marble. Remember, these were chosen by qualifying and then team captains were picked and then there was a draft to create the teams and that's how we've gotten to where we are so we'll see frank in the first frame and we'll see him again in the sixth frame right as we move our way down each of the five team members we're at Malwitz's island lanes on grand island at beat the champ tv hashtag beat the champ on Twitter, like our Beat the Champ Facebook page for all the latest information as we're gonna move to the Rapids Bowling Center in Niagara Falls for next week's shows. And a spare right off the bat for Team Marble, thanks to Frank Miseraka the third. And Team Malwitz comes out for their first frame with Jessica Balling. What was, uh, the team format has been a lot of fun. It's so much different than what we're used to seeing on the show, Sue. When you were back in high school and in college as part of a team, what's the dynamics of being on a team and bowling in a format like this? Well, it's, it's totally different uh, from individual bowling is because you are relying on four other people. So it's really not on all, all your shoulders. You have to have a different mentality because it's not really about you. You go up and you do the best that you can, but you've got four other people cheering for you which motivates you when you're on the lane and then you're cheering for them. And, you know, if you make a little bit of a mistake or something like that, you've got other people pick you up. But we have bowled this format before. My team bowled something called the Brunswick Team World Team Challenge, which was a great tournament that existed, you know, back in the 90s. And I'm surprised it's never been brought up again because Baker Bowling really is a lot of fun. It was this format, it was Baker Bowling. Sure. And, and it certainly is uh, fun for the fans to watch at home. It's it, it provides a little different level of intensity and volume and noise as everybody's cheering each other on. So you, yeah, you'd think it, it would be. It's perfect for television. I'm surprised that the PBA hasn't done it's, more. It's a of little that. confusing. We were uh, we had little labels on our back, like if you bowled one, it's, you had like a 16 on your back or a 27 on your back or a 38 on your back. So it was a little easier for the viewer to follow. Like in this case, it's a little difficult to sure. follow. Hey, uh, a ball. uniform like every other team sport, right? right? This is Chris Bugenhagen. He was impressive in the first match of the day. And that came off his hand wrong and it'll wind up being open frames two in a row here. One for Team Malwitz, one for Team Marble. So now his wife is bowling. Right. So this is for, might be for bragging rights at home. <laughs> so correction that's two open frames in the first two frames for team Malwitz and now Lisa Buchenhagen will get a chance to one up her husband with uh, a little better than the open frame Come on, Lisa. Oh, very nice shot though nice shot 10 pin still standing is there a strategy to team bowling? Is it, I mean, it, 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 how do you prepare for it other than you get one shot, you get out there and you do what you can? Communication is a big thing in team bowling. When we're bowling team for, even our team that's bowling now, even when we bowl college, there's a lot of talk, what you see, what's happening on the lane. Uh, is this lane hooking more? And it prepares you to go up on a lane. You're not just figuring it out alone. You're figuring it out with the help of four other people. Because you don't get a chance to be up there enough to figure out what's up with the lane, so the person ahead of you has to say, hey, here's what it's doing. You want to try this. Right, because instead of it being a one person against one person, you're talking about four people. A lot, the lanes change a lot faster because you've got a lot, you've got ten people bowling on a pair versus two people bowling on a pair. So you'll see a lot of change in the lanes. So you keep talking to each other and tell them what's happening, so what you see happening, so that when you go up to bowl, if they've changed, you make the proper moves. Jim Fox bowling now for Team Marble. You got to look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. It's an early lead for Team Marble. 
Well, is some like of the strategy come in the order that you choose the bowlers to go as far as a coach or a captain who has well, to make those decisions? Absolutely. Your highest average, your strongest bowler is always last. That's your anchor bowler. And the person ahead of them is the second highest average on your team. So. Um, this, you have a, certain personalities are really good leadoff bowlers. So you'll have someone that's enthusiastic, that's a little more peppy, that's a little more cheer, cheer related to be your leadoff. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how you, you, pick, you pick your team. Here's Jeff Dio for Team Mallets. Yeah. Nice yeah. strike. First, first of the match comes from Jeff Dio here in the third frame. It's getting scary. Team Al was just getting a little quiet there for a minute. Yes, very shockingly quiet. Anytime uh, anyone named Malwitz is quiet, it uh, surprises us. Here's Rob Piccoli now bowling for Team Malwitz. Can they capitalize on the strike? Once they figure out which lane to be on, that is. It's very confusing back and forth. This, And it's not like you're bowling and you know the routine because you've been bowling the whole time. And there's going to be a picket fence left on the right-hand side there for Rob Piccoli to deal with. Again, these lanes are going to change. I mean, they're already kind of dry to start with. And uh, they'll just change a little bit more quicker than what we're used to because yep. of the amount of balls being thrown on it. Yeah, been a lot of bowling here at Island Lanes as we've taped our month's worth of shows here. A nice spare pickup for Rob Piccoli. And now back over to Team Marble for their fourth bowler, and that is Andy Moran. Andy is, as all of these bowlers, a regular here at Island Lanes. So unique in his approach. Yeah, the results are there, though, for Andy Moran. Absolutely. Threw it well. Threw it very, very well. And now we get our team captain. This is Tim Marble. We're back to a much tighter match. Tim is the fifth bowler, and then we'll go back to the top of the list for frames six through ten. 20-pin lead for Team Marble, looking to make it 30. Yeah! Andy did it. He did it. Oh, a oh, little elbow oh. thrown there. The, the two minutes for elbowing. <laughs> Someone's going to wind up in the penalty box here at Island Lanes. So here's our team captain from Team Malwitz. It's Mike Malwitz bowling in the fifth frame. I was going to say, let's see if he bowls as good as he talks, and he certainly does. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Yeah, everybody's heating up a little bit here. Next up, Jim Fox for Team Marble. Come on, Jim. Oh. Oh, a little shake of the head there for Jim on that 10 pin. I think, he, I think he's saying to himself, I can't believe I gave Malwood something to yell at me about. This is probably a typical Wednesday or Friday night right. here. It's about what it sounds like, the I think, in here. The only difference is we're here and a few cameras. And that's right. I think if you, if, you want to, if you want to experience this yourself, just come here to yeah. Island Lanes any Wednesday or Friday, right? Monday or Wednesday. <laughs> Well, let's see, maybe Andy Moran can put this thing away. Come on, Andy. 
Very impressive performance okay. by Tim Marvel's team here. And yep, they're not caving to the nope, intimidation they are at not, all. They are not caving to the noise, to the intimidation. They are just going out there and knocking down pins. Rob Piccoli for Team Malwitz to finish off the ninth frame. Come on, Rob. Yeah, all right. Well, the guys have certainly heated up here on the back five. So Malwitz's team has a potential score of a 218. So it's going to force team, if they strike, it's going to force team Marvel to just mark. Okay. So it's still, it's still, so it's, it's still not decided match, yet. Team Malwitz definitely has to keep striking. All right, so we and need, better we need three strikes out of Mike Malwitz here to keep this thing alive. Not too much pressure. Not for him. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, well, there's one. Still alive. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can he do it again? He can do it again. He's gonna force Tim to go out there and make a good shot. It's gonna be a fun 10th frame. So much for the big comeback. <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike put a nice little run at it, kept it entertaining as he always does, but the... Well, you let Team Marvel sit on the bench and win. Yep. It's going to be Team Marvel. It's going to get some serious bragging rights here at Island Lanes. And another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty to be thrown on Mike Mullins. And here's the captain. There's a nice way to finish it out. So we're down the stretch here, and then I can't wait to uh, get a chance to talk to Tim and the rest of his gang about uh, how much they're going to hold this over the head of all the <laughs> members of Team Malwitz. Nice. Another big strike for Tim. This might just be what Tim needs to get us back on the beat the champ, uh, get us back on beat the champ regularly. So, with some, with some pretty good bowling, and a lot, yes. a lot of these bowlers are beat the champ alumni now. Yeah, at least uh, four or five of them we have seen on the show before. So, so here's the final throw for Tim Marble. <laughs> And the final score posted on the board of 246 for Team Marble. Nicely done. It's a 246 to 205 win for Tim Marble and his team to claim the Island Lanes House Championship. So when we come back, we will talk to the members of the victorious team and find out just how much they're going to throw it in the face of their fellow bowlers when Beat the Champ returns to Grand Island right after this. Well, here I am, surrounded by Team Marble, the kings of Island Lanes. Captain Tim, congratulations. What was the key to victory? Uh, the key to victory was knowing that Malwitz would fold under pressure. <laughs> um, it clearly, he just he just didn't he couldn't pull through for his team, and uh, that's on him. All right. So conservatively, how many times per day will you remind Malwitz of this um, victory? I, you know what? It's it's going to start as soon as we're done here, and it will not stop until we do this again. All right. Well, guess what? They earned it. They are the kings of Island Lanes, winners of our Island Lanes House Championship. Congratulations, guys. This was a lot of fun. It was. It was a blast. All right. So Sue and I come back to 
wrap up our month-long stay in Grand Island and get you ready for next month's series of Beat the Champ shows. We'll do that when we return. It's Beat the Champ in Grand Island at Island Lanes. We're back right after this. Well, that sure was a fun way to end our run here at Island Lanes. I'm exhausted. I need a couple of weeks off after that. I know. Just watching them makes you tired. How do they get all the energy from? <laughs> when we started our run here a month ago, we talked about the unpredictability of the Beat the Champ show and, and great bowlers and who was going to win and the matchups. And, and we saw a lot of that, although the one guy who broke the unpredictability part was Mike Zarcone with his amazing stretch of six straight wins. Right. And then, you know, it looked like he was going to carry it through to the end and Chris came in and uprooted him so just really don't know what's gonna happen same for next week we're, yeah we're going to Rapids look for high scores but we can't predict what's going to happen. No, we cannot. As much as we would like to try and make you think that we know everything, <laughs> we do not. So we know Chris Labiak is coming back. We'll see him in our first match at the Rapids Bowling Center in Niagara Falls as we head back there for the second time. So it should be fun. So for all the gang here at Beat the Champ, we'll see you next week in the falls. Thanks for watching Beat the Champ from here in Grand Island.